Thank you. All right, get mic'd up here and we'll be good to go. All right, everybody having a good time at the conference so far? All right. Yay! I love coming out to the conference. If everybody knows I'm kind of, a, you know, I, I have to show up every year, even if I have to travel all the way across the country to get here. So I'm happy to be here. Happy to talk about asterisk. In case you can't tell by the bright orange shirt, I, I, I happen to like uh, asterisk a little bit and, and working for Digium a whole lot. So um, excited to be out here today. Uh, I have brought lots of swag. Yay! Yay. Yay. Hope, hope, hopefully I've got enough for everybody in the room to get something. If you walk out of this room and you don't get anything, then something's wrong. Uh, also, I've got to point out before we get started here, I like to throw things. So I've got these, I, I even got asterisk mints that I'm just going to throw at people. And if they're not careful, it's going to catch them right in the face. So, 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 so be on your toes. I'll, I'll, I'll get loaded up here with ammo. All right. So let's get started. A little bit about me. Again, my name is Jared Smith. I'm the training manager for Digium. Uh, so I go travel around the country and around the world doing training classes uh, specifically about Asterisk. I'm also the author of, of the O'Reilly book on Asterisk, and I've got a couple of free books to give away from, from O'Reilly as well. So, um, so what I want to talk about today is, first of all, uh, just an introduction to Asterisk. How many people here know what Asterisk is? Most everybody. So I can skip over most of the introduction. And then we're going to get into the Asterisk dial plan. OK? Sound good? Um, along the way, we're going to talk about what is Asterisk, talk about the different versions of Asterisk there are out there. Where does Asterisk fit into the, the, the grand scheme of things as far as telephony and, and, and voice over IP and that sort of thing? And then we'll get into the Asterisk dial plan. And then towards the end, I'm just going to kind of open it up to, and, and we're going to play Stump the Dummy. I'll stand up here and you guys ask questions and I'll code it in the dial plan live. Sound like fun? Yeah. All right, let's get started. So let's talk about what is Asterisk. You guys you know, say you're fairly, fairly familiar with Asterisk. So you know that Asterisk is an open source telephony platform. It's a telephony engine. Uh, you can use it for, for your home phone system, or you can use it in a small business, or in a, in, in a large carrier environment, or you know, uh, be a voice over IP service provider. There's lots of different ways that, that you can use Asterisk. As far as an open source project, uh, the website is asterisk.org. We've got about 25 or 30 lead developers. These are people who are in the source code all the time, adding features, fixing bugs, making changes, uh, making asterisk what it is today. And then behind those, we have a, a group of about 50 or 60 you know, really regular contributors, people who are on a regular basis contributing code to, to asterisk. Um, and then behind that, we have a hundred, hundreds of uh, occasional contributors, people like myself who aren't hardcore programmers, but we'll add code to Asterisk from time to time when we need a new feature or want to see something fixed that hasn't been addressed by the other developers. And then we have thousands of other people out there helping uh, with, with you know, the development of Asterisk, whether it's bug testing, whether it's interoperability testing with other equipment out there. Um, there's, there there's an entire army of people in the world you know, dedicated to make Aster making Asterisk better. Um, one of the unique, unique features of uh, of Asterisk as an open source project is it does have a strong commercial uh, you know, you know, kind, of, kind of maintainer, which is Digium. But more than half of the new features that went into Asterisk version 1.4 came from outside of Digium. They came from the community at large, which I think, I think is very cool. You know? that we, yeah, we try to be the, you know, kind of, kind of the, the umbrella under which Asterisk is developed, but we don't want to stifle innovation. We don't want to be the ones to even set really roadmaps as far as where Asterisk goes. We want that to come from the community. So, so that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, just a couple of stats to tell you how popular Asterisk is right now. Um, there are over 2 million Asterisk servers being used in production today. And, uh, and just from the carriers that we've talked to that we know about, there's over, over 12 billion new minutes of calls going through Asterisk servers this year alone. And again, that's just the minutes we know about. There's a whole lot of minutes we don't know. Um, one of the things I've got to give away here is a, is a bumper sticker. It says you're, pro you're already using asterisk, you just don't know it yet. And, and that's very, very true. Um, asterisk is used in all kinds of places where, you know, where you're using asterisk and you don't know about it. Sometimes you'll recognize the sound prompts from being from asterisk or some other, you know, the way the voicemail is laid out or something like that to know you're using an asterisk system. But a lot of times you're using asterisk, you just don't know it. Talk about what does Digium do? Well, again, we're the developer and the maintainer of, uh, of the asterisk project. Um, we also develop some hardware, um, some PCI cards, PCI Express cards for connecting to analog phones or analog phone lines or T1 lines, that sort of thing. Uh, we also build appliances and small turnkey products. I've got one on display here to, uh, to you know, 
and, and we sell those as well. Uh, we also have some commercial software products as well. The idea of, uh, of Digium is to make, make what money we can on the commercial side, use that to fund the open source side and, and make it better. So that's kind of our philosophy there. Uh, we're, we're headquartered in Huntsville, Alabama, Rocket City, USA. Uh, kind of a fun town if you've never been to Huntsville, Alabama. You can drive down the road and there's a Saturn V rocket sitting there and it's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about asterisk as a phone switch or asterisk as a PBX. Uh, you can use asterisk for all kinds of things and we'll get into some of the other ways you can use asterisk here in a minute. But typically asterisk is deployed as a, PV, a PBX. And what a PBX is, is a private branch exchange. So think for a minute about the phone company. The phone company's got an exchange somewhere in your neighborhood, usually within oh, five or six miles of your house, right? And that's a public exchange. Well, what a PBX or a phone switch is, is it's a private exchange. It's a private branch exchange. You've got your own little copy of the, uh, of, of the, you know, the phone center switch right, right within your office. Now, it's obviously a scaled down version, but it does the same sort, sorts of things. It routes calls. It, it uh, has additional features. It may allow users to share some kind of a resource, like shared lines, that sort of thing. Now, a PBX typically also has some features. It'll have voicemail and it'll have audio conferencing and it might have call queues or hunt groups or things like that. So Asterisk does all these things. One of the, uh, the cool things about Asterisk is in addition to just being a phone switch is that it has a bunch of open APIs so that you can tie Asterisk to your Maybe you've got a, a, a call management system. Maybe you've got a CRM system. Maybe you've got a ticketing system. Maybe you want your Astra system to call you at 3 o'clock in the morning because the, the, you know, your server backups failed. You can tie, tie into these sorts of things very, very easily with the APIs that we provide in Asterisk. Um, so it, it, it's neat that way. Now, I, I'm going to throw out this question here. What, is a, what does a PBX look like? Before we say what does a 21st century PBX look like, let's say what does a 20th century PBX look like? It's a big box. Big iron, like big iron box hanging on the wall, gathering dust in some, some, some overheated telco closet, right? Yeah, miles and miles of copper wire. Myers, miles and miles of copper wire. You know, that's the nice thing about copper. They say it may be underground, but it's not dead yet. So, so that's kind of the, the last century look at what a PBX is. What does a PBX look like in the 21st century? Looks like look a server. Looks like a piece of you know PC equipment. So I brought a couple of examples here. This is one of my favorite PBXs. A little Netgear router running Linux, running Asterisk. Kind of a small end you know device for for running a PBX, but but it works. And then a lot of times it looks like a you know ordinary PC hardware. You turn this around and oh my goodness, it's got a video port, it's got a keyboard port, it's got a mouse port. So you've got a parallel port on there kind of a PBX does that? Well, the answer is that more and more people are, people are using ordinary commodity PC hardware to be their PBX. Okay? So one of the nice things about Asterisk is it's kind of like the great communicator. It's the Swiss Army knife of, of, of telephony because it can speak so many different protocols and so many different codecs and, and you know, so many different ways of connecting telephony, whether it's analog or digital. <coughs> Um, and it can translate to and from all those different methods. And uh, so it makes a great toolkit for solving different problems. Um, you may not use it as a PBX. You may just say, hey, I want the voicemail functionality, or I want the unified messaging functionality, or oh, I just, I'm going to just use this for call routing, or hey, I've got this one particular problem. I need to interface this PBX with voice over IP. So there's lots of different things you can do there. And we have a blank slide. Awesome. And another blank slide. And I'm getting into, there's the slide I was looking for. I had, had a couple of slides hidden and it shows, just uh, showed blank slide and slides instead. Sorry about that. So the first place you can use asterisk is just as a replacement for a typical analog you know, PBX. You have phone lines coming in, phone lines going out to phones. Then you just put an asterisk system in there, connect these phones out to the PSTN, the public switch telephone network. Okay? This is just your replacement for your ordinary PBX. Now, you can also get fancy and get into all this voice over IP stuff, right? So here we have some IP telephones that just talk across your, your network in your office to the asterisk system. The asterisk system may even talk across the, uh, across the network out to the internet and to something called an ITSP, an internet telephony service provider. 
is a company that you send them voice calls across the internet and then they connect them out to the phone network. So you don't have a physical copper connection out to the phone network. You just rely on, on getting those calls through, through the internet. And you may have a second ast astro system over here and maybe they're tied together through the internet so you can make free calls between these boxes and that sort of thing. Okay. Obviously you can, you can uh, mix and match those two and make kind of a hybrid system where yeah we have a T1 here and we have some, some, some analog phones here but we also have some IP phones and some voice over IP going on. That's very simple to do with asterisk. A couple of places where asterisk gets used that you might not think of it, at least initially, is to use it as maybe a, a VoIP gateway. Maybe you've got an existing phone switch and it doesn't do anything with voice over IP and you just have a connection come from it into asterisk, maybe a T1 line, and then asterisk converts that T1 line into voice over IP and sends it out to the internet. Maybe you do toll bypass. Maybe you have an existing switch in New York City and an existing switch in Los Angeles and you tie them together with asterisk boxes through the internet and they can make free calls back and forth between those two servers. So, there's that kind of thing. They do. Um, really, they do. So, um, we can also use asterisk as a feature server, meaning we have an existing PBX out there and we just hang asterisk off the, off the back side of it. Maybe we want to use this for, for voicemail or maybe we want to use this for audio conferencing or maybe we want to use this for IVRs or call queues or <laughs> You know, there's so many different things out there that you can think of that, that, that you may just hang this off an existing switch and, and just use it for its features. So there's, th there's those opportunities. Obviously, you can use it in a call center situation. We won't go into all the different things you can do with call centers on asterisk, but that's kind of how, how I cut my teeth on asterisk, and that's really, really powerful what it can do. If you're a, a carrier, maybe you're trying to, to be an ITSP, or maybe you already work for a telephone company or an ISP, you can use the features of asterisk, whether it's routing or, or be a local point of presence or voicemail server or a peering server of some kind, a calling card or international callback. Those are all types of services that carriers really like to use asterisk for. But what, we, what, what I see, oh, and I got a typo on my slide there, sorry about that. What I really see um, asterisk being used for a lot is being used as a platform. It's a stable base that we can build other things on top of. Uh, it's got a modular architecture so we can say, I want this piece and this piece and this piece. I could care less about these others, let's just get rid of them. You know, the best analogy I can use is that asterisk is kind of like a bucket of Legos. Anybody here like to play with Legos? I still do. My, my son will buy a box of Legos and I'll end up sitting there <laughs> playing with him. Um, the idea is that, that I'm going to hand you this, this uh, bucket of Legos. And Brandon, what are you going to build with a bucket of Legos? Uh, castle. He's, you're going to build a castle. Travis, what are you going to build with a bucket of Legos? A fort. A fort. Chris, what would you build with a bucket of Legos? I was going to build his castle. <sighs> Nobody's going to build a spaceship? Spaceship. A spaceship. Right uh, Trist there, yeah. Trist Tristan saved me there. You know, what everybody, you know, some people want to build a castle. Some people want to build a spaceship, and that's okay. Asterisk gives you all these pieces, and you kind of get to put them together and build whatever you want with them. So that's what we're going to do in the dial plan a little bit later today. Now, before we get too far into the dial plan, I want to just talk a little bit about the overall architecture of Asterisk. One of the most important pieces in, in asterisk is something called a channel driver. And the idea behind a channel driver is that that's what converts signaling from one telephony protocol into something that asterisk can understand. So for example, we have a channel driver that talks analog and T1. We call that our, our ZAP channel driver. We have a channel driver that speaks the SIP protocol and converts that signaling into something that asterisk can understand. And we have others for other protocols. The idea is that a phone out here, let's say this is an IP telephone, and it wants to talk to asterisk, it's going to come, the call's going to come through that channel driver, and it's going to turn, turn that SIP signaling in, into a, in asterisk internal call representation, and then it's going to come into asterisk and come into something called the dial plan. And the dial plan is what controls the logic of the system. So this is where you get to say, hey, when somebody dials one, two, three, this is what happens. Okay? So let's talk about the asterisk uh, dial plan scripting language here for a minute. Um, this, the, the dial plan really ends up being more of a scripting language than just a configuration file. Um, it's it's not, not the world's most advanced programming language or scripting language, but it has enough power that you can really do some pretty neat things in the dial plan. 
Um, it's a little hokey, but you can get used to it. And if you really hate it, we have something called AGI, where you pass control of the call out to some external program. So you can write your logic in Python or Perl or PHP or Java or C Sharp or you know, COBOL, heaven forbid. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can do that. All right. Let's talk about some, some of the, the, the concepts for the, the syntax of the dial plan, first of all here. Um, the dial plan is broken up into different pieces, and we call these, people, these pieces contexts. You can just think, think of them as containers of functionality. You could have extension 123 be in this context, and it would be completely independent from extension 123 over here in this other context. So it just keeps different pieces of the dial plan separate from each other. Okay? Within those contexts, we have one or more extensions. Now, extension is kind of a funny word. When we're talking about asterisk, an extension is not a phone. A lot of other PBXs, when you're talking about an extension, you're talking about a telephone set, sitting on someone's desk, right? In the world of, an, of asterisk, an extension is simply a named set of actions. It's a set of steps to perform. So when I dial 123, asterisk is going to go look for an extension called 123 and say, hey, what should I do? Should I ring a phone? Should I go to voicemail? Should I try to route to another server? What should I do? Okay. Within each of those extensions, we have something called a priority. And a priority is just a step it should take. First I'm going to do this step, then I'm going to do this next step, then I'm going to do this, this other step. Oh, what's going on with my font there? All right. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the syntax here, and then I'll actually bring this up so you can see it a little bit easier. So the syntax is we have our context name, whatever name we want to pick, and we put that in square brackets. And then we have, to create an extension, we put the word extend, and then we make an arrow out of an equal sign, greater than sign, and then we'll have the extension name, a comma, the priority number or sequence number or step number, and then a comma, and then the application name. So let's, let's bring up an example here. Um, open up a terminal here, go to my asterisk directory, and let's just look at my dial plan. It's in a file called extensions.conf. Now you see here, let's just look at these first few lines. I have a context here called incoming. Can everybody see that? Do I need to make that a little bit bigger? Let's zoom that in a bit. Okay, now, now everybody can see that. So we have a context here called incoming, and, and the name is in square brackets. And I've configured this phone that whenever this phone makes a call, that it comes to this incoming context. Okay? Then within that context, I have an extension 123 here. Okay? And then you see I have three different steps that it's going to perform. And then for each one of those steps, I tell it something to do. So the first thing I want to do is call the answer application to say, hey, answer the call. It's the first thing we want it to do. The second thing we want it to do is play back a sound prompt that says, hello world. What's the first program you ever write in any new programming language? Hello world, right? And then last but not least, after it's done saying hello world, we want it to hang up the call. A pre pretty simple example here, right? Okay, but that shows you the power of what you can do with the, with the with the asterisk dial plan. So let's switch here to the, that screen. And let's, let's just see what happens when I dial extension 123 here. Hello, world. Just exactly what we wanted it to do, right? Yeah, great, great demo. It worked. OK. Any questions up to this point? You'll regret it if you don't, if you, if you don't ask questions now. <laughs> Trust me, you're going to be screaming like this if you don't get your questions out. Okay, so you called it incoming. Is that always the default? No. The, there's nothing special about the name of a context. All I did was, was created a context and gave it whatever name I wanted to call it. In this case, I just called it incoming because I've got incoming calls from this phone. But there's nothing special about that name. All I did is in, this, in the phone configuration, I told the phone, hey, when this phone sends a call into asterisk, send it into this context called incoming. As long as that matches up with what I have in my dial plan, it doesn't matter what we call it. We could have called it Brandon. We could have called it you know, peanut butter and jelly. It doesn't matter the name. What, what, what matters is it matches up with the, with the phone's configuration. So, yeah, which, yeah, where, the phone's configuration, are we going to talk about that later? No, I'll show you right now. You tell the phone that that's... Okay, what, so... What you were editing in that Etsy... 
file so, the the, uh, the asteroid.conf. Is that, uh -huh. That's for all of asteroids. This 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 is this is called extensions.conf, oh. and this is just the dial plan. Yep. Okay. This has just the dial plan. There's another configuration file for the for the SIP channel driver. Okay. What's going on here? My machine appears to have locked up. That's always nice. Okay. Well, we'll. we'll all right. No, it's completely. Does the phone still work? The phone still works. We'll see if we'll see if my other extension works. And if we had a whiteboard, I'd. Well, we'll, we'll just we'll just you know, wing it here. Um, so there, in, each of the channel drivers also has a configuration file. So since this is a, a telephone that uses the SIP protocol, it has a configuration file called SIP.conf. And SIP.conf, SIP. SIP, the session initiation protocol. And so in SIP.conf, we, we, we create an account in there for this phone and we say, this phone has, you know, has this username, this password, has these options set. And one of the things we set in there is the context that this phone is pointed at is that incoming context. That also lives in the Etsy asterisk directory? In the Etsy asterisk directory, it's a configuration file called SIP.conf. Man, I wish I knew what. Can we take a two-minute break and I'll reboot my machine and we'll get back up and running? Reboot your machine. Reboot while swag. we. While we. Add. We'll throw some swag. That's right. Swag. Got a question too. Sure. Go ahead. But, um, so, yeah, the dial, the dial plan language is obvious enough that um, uh, after it answers, then it moves on to this next step, mm -hmm. back something, and then after it's done doing that, it moves on to the next step. But how do you how do you script uh, something where the user can interrupt what's being done? We were going to instance if you want to you know hit star or something or other and it starts recording or something. Yep. How do you program that in the dial plan? We'll show that's what that's what was going to be next before the machine locked up. All right. That was the next example. <laughs> All right, let's boot this up here. I know it's really exciting to watch my machine boot up. Let's throw away some swag here while we're while we're uh, while we're thinking about things. All right, who wants some swag? Here's a question though: the uh, phones themselves. I, I imagine there's uh, all sorts of ranges. What what what's good like home type of phone? Uh huh. Um, you know, most people like either the Polycom phones or the Linksys phones or the Astra phones or the Snome phones. But you can get a decent kind of home home you know home or small office type phone for anywhere from about 100 to about $200, just depending on the model. There are cheaper models out there, but... Moving the Cisco's into BYU, they were like, at the time, eight, seven, eight hundred dollars pop, you know? Something. Yeah, it's kind of, pro kind of prohibitive for, 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 for your home yeah. phone system, so... But if you see that special image that, you know, you're... Oh, yeah, you're actor, we're, we're professional. Let's go. You can buy better, but you can't pay more. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to use that. I, I, I like that. <laughs> That's it. That that that's exactly right. You can. Other questions? Here, just for, just just for that question, we will give you a hat. How's that? Sure. All right. Other questions? I almost booted back up here. Yes. Oh sure. I'd I'd be happy to do that. So so so. Okay. So so the the question was. You know, how, how much does a typical, you know, IP phone cost and what's kind of the, the, the range of a price is something more suitable for like a, a home setup or a home office type setup. And, uh, you know, you, you, can get, you can get $50 IP phones. I don't really recommend the really cheap ones because you're going to regret it. And I just mistyped my password. Um, but you can get anywhere from $100 to $200 a really decent phone. So. Is there any particular brands you recommend? I really like the Linksys phones. Uh, this is the SPA 962. Um, color screen, six line appearances. It's a pretty decent phone for the kind of, you know, not, not the super high end phone. You know, I probably wouldn't put this on the CEO's desk, but uh, this is the one I carry around with me and travel with. Um, the Polycom phones are really nice. Uh, IP, you know, 550 and 560. Uh, 660 is, re or the 650, excuse me, is a great phone. It's a little pricier. It's more $250, somewhere that range. but. Uh, it's 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 got a little little, little better audio quality to it, you know, better speaker phone. Yeah. Oh. Do you have strong feelings against any particular brand? Do I have strong feelings against any particular brand of phone? Um, 
there's really only one company that I really make a lot of fun of, and I'm, I'm not going to make fun of them anymore because they've actually cleaned up their product line and, 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 and brought it back up to speed. It used to be we called them the Barbie phones because it was a really cheap plastic phone, and you'd pick up the handset and the, the phone would fly across your desk. And, you know, it was, uh, you know they, were just, they were just plain cheap, but, uh, but most, most all the vendors now have, have good phones. We used that, the uh, Linksys a couple of years ago, and we were really frustrated with the method of transferring calls using it. It seemed really awkward. Do you know if it's just a matter of transfer and dial and dial? It is. Basically, basically, you'll be on one call, you'll press the transfer key, the little soft key up, up on the menu, you'll type in the extension that you want to dial, and then you'll either hang up or press there's another transfer, you know, soft key that you have to do to complete the transfer. That was it. What's that? It's just the, the different phones have different ways of, uh, of, of finishing the transfer. Polycom so is the same way. Polycom's the same way, because, because you can do an, an attended transfer. So I'm on the phone with Alice, and I transfer the call to Bob, and then I can talk to Bob and say, hey, Bob, I've got Alice on the other line. I'd like you two to talk. And then I complete that transfer, yeah, and just to transfer and hang up. And yep. Yeah, and it, again, every every phone is different. Okay. There we go. Wait for my presentation to come up and pull up a terminal here. Do those different transfers require different dial plan setups? No, most of those are handled actually by the by the phone itself. So what, what really happens when you transfer, like on a SIP phone, is it just sends a new call to asterisk, gets that new call set up, and then it re, you know, basically refers the old call to the new call and says, hey, you two talk together. So it's actually handled not by the dial plan, but is handled by, by uh, the, phone, the phone itself. Then ultimately, is that handled by the asterisk uh, server to the point where you could just unplug the phone that made the transfer and it would still... Yeah, after, after, the call, after the call is uh, transferred, you can unplug that phone and, and okay, here we go. So this is, this is kind of where we were. Um, we, did the, we, we did our example here of, of Hello World, okay? So the next question, uh, I've forgotten your name. Andrew, is that right? Um, ask, well, what if I want to do something where the caller can input some information? Maybe they have a prompt and it says, please enter the extension of the person that you'd like to reach. And then they can dial 200 if they want to make my phone ring, or 201 if they want to make Bob's phone ring. We can have something like that. To do that, we use this application called Background. And the idea of the Background application is that it plays a sound prompt, but that you can interrupt that sound prompt by pressing the keys on the keypad of your phone. So in this case, it's going to say, enter the extension of the person you'd like to reach. And then if it finishes playing back that sound prompt, we're going to use the Wait Extend application to say, hey, wait a few more seconds for a response. Okay. Is there, how do you, uh, is there a way to make it say wait for five seconds, ten seconds? You could specifically, in, in this parameter to the wait extend application, you, you could put a number of seconds in there to tell how long to wait. After that point in time, I'm assuming it would move back to the background and repeat the statement? Not, not unless you tell it to. Okay. By default, when we run out of priority numbers here, we do step one, we do step two, we do it as step three. Anything beyond that, if there's no other priorities, it's going to hang up the call. So we would have to specifically put in a step four here that says go back and, and go back to step number two. But we could easily do that. Okay? What happens when we actually interrupt the, the recording and, and start pressing digits is asterisk is going to try to find another extension in the same context that matches what we dialed. And if it finds a match, then it's going to send it to that extension. So in this case, if I dialed 200, it would come out here and try to dial a SIP telephone called J. Smith. And then if I didn't answer that, then it would drop down and send me to voicemail and put me in mailbox 200. Or if I dialed out to extension 201, it would try to call Bob Jones's phone. And if he didn't answer, it would go to voicemail. So would you have to have every person in your office in the incoming context? Or can you say, dial something and then go look it up in that you, you, can't, you can't have it do other things, look it up in a database or look in another context, but that's going to be on the scope of, uh, of what we're covering here today. But yes, yeah, you're going to have to have their configuration somewhere, either in a database or, or, uh, or in, in the dial plan somewhere. Okay, so let's, let's, let's give this, this example a shot. So it says, what extension do I want to reach? I'm going to say 201. And it went to voicemail because his phone isn't plugged in right now. 
So I just left a, a voicemail for Bob. So you can see here in about 10 lines of code, now we have phones calling each other um, and, and, and calls going to voicemail and we have a very simple voice menu. All right. Let's talk a little bit about variables for a minute. We can use variables within our dial plan and do things like keep track of how many times we've looped through a particular menu. And so to, to set a variable, we use the set application. So we, so we have a, an extension number and a priority number, and then we say set, and then the variable name equals, and a value. If later on in our dial plan we wanted a reference to that variable, the syntax that you use is dollar sign, curly brace, and then the variable name, and a closed curly brace. Can you do arithmetic in there? Absolutely. I don't have an example here, but let's, let's, let's do a little math example, shall we? Just, just for the fun of it. So you guys can all watch my, my live dial plan editing skills here. So we're going to go to the bottom here. Let's just create a new extension called 203. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is set a variable. Okay. So we're going to say set count equals 1. Okay. And then in the next step here, let's tell it to... We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and say back the, read back the number. Uh, yeah, hold on just a second. That's sure. Uh, oh, that'll work. Okay, can you read that a little bit better? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is in the first step, I've, I've, I'm setting a variable called count to a value of one. Step two, I'm having it read back that number to us. Here, you guys, that's kind of at the bottom of the screen. Let me scroll that up. That easier to see? Okay, then we're going to say, now let's increment count. Let's set count equal to, and we use a dollar sign square bracket whenever we want asterisk to go ahead and evaluate an expression. Like, figure out what the value of this and then return that value. So we're going to do, a, do a, an expression here that's count, the value of count, plus one. Okay? And then last but not least, let's just add a loop to that and say go back to step number two. All right? So I've, I've saved that. Let me go into asterisk here. And I'm going to do a dial plan reload so that reloads those changes that I've just made to the dial plan. And now, what did I call that, 204? 203. So now we have a phone system that can count. So it shows it just how easy it is to do things with, and, and, and program your phone system to do what you want. Okay? We were able to say the, the number 12. Is it too large? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now I am running a I'm running a, a very bleeding edge version of Asterisk that I've made a bunch of changes to, so you probably wouldn't see that kind of a message in in a production system. But uh, good enough good good enough for for a presentation here. So that's 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 kind of doing a voice menu and and doing some arithmetic. Uh, let's go back to where we were. System uh, fails with such a sexy voice. That's right. Okay, so. Okay, so where we were about right there. Okay. Anything else you'd like to see? This is this is this is your. This 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 this, this is where I'm just going to open it up and let people just say. What what they'd like to see, Chris. I've got one phone set up. I could set another one up quite quickly if you need me to. Can you demonstrate paging in the dial Sure. So let's let's do that. Let's say I want to like like do a do a, a page. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call in and, and and page all the phones out there. Okay. So we'll pull up my dial plan here. And we'll add an extension 205 
Priority number one, we're going to answer the call. And now I need a sound prompt that says, please record your minute. Ah, we'll just, we'll just go ahead and do the page. We're going to tell, tell, hey, which, which phones do we want to page? We'll page SIP slash um, Linksys, which is that Linksys phone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do, just call this directly from the microphone here, and it should record from the microphone and out to that, to that phone. Now, there's only one, one extra thing I have to throw in here, and I have to tell it, I have to set a special SIP header to tell, it, tell that phone, I want you to automatically answer this call. Unfortunately, I don't remember exactly what that is off the top of my head, so we'll Google quickly. Talk, to, talk amongst Are yourselves. There macros where you can say all phones or is yes. a group of phones? Um, you can define groups of phones and then, and then call out to a group of phones. Okay. Just with a, with a, with a variable. <coughs> Tell us a little bit about this priority thing. Okay, so, so the priority things is, are just like a step, step number. It's just like programming in BASIC, except at least in BASIC you could go 10, 20, 30, and asterisk you, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Are there scripts that renumber things for you? No, but one thing you can get away with is, is as long as your first priority is called 1, you can make your second one N, and your third one N, and your fourth one N, and N just stands for next. So you don't have to manually number them. And you can also add a label here. So instead of saying go to priority two here, I could create a, say I want to go back up to a label called loop. And then I come up here and say, hey, this priority in, it has a name of loop. You never asked. <laughs> Uh, it will. No, that's not. It will try to do the right thing. It'll, it'll, it'll show you on the CLI a little warning message that says, hey, I've, I already have another priority too. In fact, you want to see that? Yep. We, can, we can do that. So let's, let's look at extension 205 here, for example. See how I've got two priority twos here? So now when I go into asterisk, and I say, let me make sure my verbosity level is set at 2. Oops, course set verbose 2. OK. Now when I do a dial plan reload, it goes and reloads it. And it, did, hmm. you, did you save the other file? I thought I did. Oh, there we go. Unable to regist register extension 205 priority 2, already in use. So it tries to do, do the right thing. Now it's not going to automatically assume that the next one is three. It's just going to warn you, hey, I've got two, 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 two priority twos will there. Use the first one or the second one? It will use the first one it finds. All right, now let's work on this paging thing here. Uh, the thing I need to set is uh, SIP ad header alert info. That's the one, but I want to make sure I've got the right. Sorry, it's not the right one. That's it right there. Call, call info. No pitch for voice info? It's, 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 it's an, 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 an interesting wiki for having a lot of voice. voice. VoIP info, VoIP information about Asterisk and about some of the other VoIP projects out there. Um, unfortunately, some, like some of the other big, big wikis out there that we all know about, it's only as good as the information that people bother to go and put in it. A lot of it's wrong information or just, you know, not, not very clear information. And it could use a little cleanup. But it, it, it does have a lot of good use, useful information in there as long as you understand that not all of it is 100% is right. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is... I'll go ahead and insert a line here. Let's just go back to numbering these with N. Oops. And then we'll paste that in there, telling that to answer, automatically answer that call. So that's a, just a, SIP, a special SIP header that we send to this particular model of phone to tell it, hey, automatically answer that call instead of 
instead of ringing the phone. All right, so now that we've got that saved, come back here, we'll do a dial plan reload, make sure there's no warnings. And then, and then this time what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to load up a module called Chan OSS. So basically it's going to use the sound system on my PC here as if it were another, another phone out there on the system. And then I can do something like console dial 205 at that incoming directory. Hmm. It wasn't able to open the sound card for some reason. Well, let's try this. Hmm. No sound card detected. That's always a fun thing. Can you just pipe a sound file to it? Uh, not, not easily. What I would really need to do is make another call from another phone here. Um, let's see what's going to be the quickest to get configured here. Let's let's come back to that. Um, I, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for other questions, and I'll I'll, I'll configure another phone up, and we'll, maybe a soft phone or something. We'll get up and running. Um, when you do the reload uh, dial plan, uh -huh. it, there's people on the call. It does not drop them. Right? It does not. It does not drop them. Now, if they happen to be at step four and we do a reload and step five has changed, it'll go on to the new step five as soon as they're done with step four. But it doesn't drop their call. A reload just says reload the configuration and, you know, but leave all the current calls in place and everything. Now, even, even with a restart, you have some options on a restart. You can type restart now, which is going to drop all your calls and restart asterisk. You could say restart gracefully which is going to basically busy out the system so no new calls can start up, but still let the, the calls that are in progress continue until they finish and then restart. You could also type restart when convenient. And that's going to wait until there are no calls on the system. If I can, type, if I can spell here. That's going to wait until there are no calls on the system and then restart. So it's really smart about the way that it, then, that it does that. All right, that, that, that was a good question. Let's. Uh, just for that, I get a copy of my book. How's that? Everybody loves an O'Reilly book. There you go. Is it signed? I can sign it, you know? In fact, come up later, I'll sign it, Dear eBay User, and you might get an extra 50 or 60 cents out of it. <laughs> All right, question over here. Can you show us an example of a queue? Sure. And how you do that? Absolutely. Okay. So the queues are configured in a configuration file called queues.conf, as you can imagine. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, is I'm going to come up here and find a queue. There's got to be a sample one here. Okay, so I've got this this queue called Mark Queue, and I'm just going to rename it to be My Queue. Okay, so I've got a queue here. And we can set, you know, what, what do we want for music on hold? Sure, that sounds fine. You know, do we want to um, make any kind of an announcement saying you're in, the, you're in such and such queue? Let's say we can set a strategy. How is it going to assign calls out to the members? Let's just have it say, ring everybody. Okay? First one to pick up, first pe first one to pick up wins. They're sales guys. They need that sort of thing. Um, we can set timeouts and how often it retries and all kinds of stuff. Um, Lots of different settings here. Um, I do want to turn on uh, some announcements here. Uh, go ahead and tell, tell them what their what their uh, what their estimated hold time is. Um, okay, that should that should so pretty much be good. It does, it, and it automatically calculates that and updates that in, you know, as, as new calls come into the system. Does it keep that uh, cache and cross restarts? It does. Awesome. Okay, so we have, uh, so what, what I'm going to do is, at, as a member of my, as my queue, I'm just going to actually have it loop back into a, into a local extension in the dial plan um, in, uh, in this incoming directory extension incoming. So that, that's going to be the, 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 the person answering the calls in this queue. Now, it's going to be a dummy thing that actually never answers the call, but the, the, this is so, so we can show it off here. 
So now that I've got that written, I'm going to do two other things here. I'm going to create an extension 206 that drops the call into the queue using the queue application. What's that? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Thanks. And the other thing I'm going to do is create this extension 500. Oops. That all it does is wait, wait five minutes. So it's never going to answer, actually answer that call. Okay? Once I've got that done, come into asterisk, reload. Now the first thing we can do is say uh, Q show. And so it shows me I have a queue here. It's called my queue. has zero calls. The strategy is ring everybody. Zero seconds average hold time and we can have a, you know, a number of people that, have, that are waiting, the number of people that have completed the calls, the number of people who have abandoned the calls, what's our service level. And here's the members in that, in that particular queue. So now I dial, what was that extension, 205, 206? Oops, if I can dial the right extension here, 206. Hmm. Unable to join queue. Yeah, I did a reload and I did a show queue. Oh, I know, I know, I know why we can't jo join that queue. Because by default it doesn't let you join a queue that doesn't have any members in it. Let's, let's do this. I'll reload this uh, module. And it's still showing as invalid. Why is that? Okay, let's try one other thing here. Let's make sure that in queues.conf, join empty. I can join empty. Let's try that. All right, now if we dial 206. I'm not getting hold music for some reason, but I'm actually in this queue. And now if we do a queue show, it shows, hey, we've got one caller. He's been waiting 10 seconds. We've got this one member. He's not in use. He hasn't taken any calls yet. So you can see, that's just that, that easy when we've built a call queue. It's not bad at all. Now we could add all kinds of fancy features, and if 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 I had the audio working here, it would actually announce to us, hey, you know, your estimated hold time is, you know, this kind of stuff. So we go ahead and we go ahead and hang up the call. We do a sh show queue here, and suddenly we say, hey, we don't have anybody in our our thing, but look, we have one abandoned call now. So it shows this. Nice show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Water bottle, because you're going to need it while you're sitting there waiting for your call to get answered. You're going to need to drink a lot of water. Okay, just a few minutes left. Uh, let's, I don't know that we've got mu much more time for real live examples, but just throw it up. Any, any other kinds of questions you have? So forwarding, uh, I understand you can, you can have it set up to auto, it'll try, you know, the primary desk phone and then automatically forward to the cell or something like that if that's not available. Absolutely. What, what, what does that take? Okay, I'll show you. I said I wasn't going to do any more live examples, but this is too, too, e too easy not to. Okay, so we're going to go back into extensions.conf. And let's say, let's go to extension 200 here that, that, that rings, my, rings my, my desk phone there. We, all we would have to do is just add another line here that says, let's say we want to call out an analog line to my, to, to my cell phone. We just, oh, let's make this in just for simplicity's sake. And yes, I'll turn the syntax highlighting off if I type. OK, so you, the next step, you would just say, OK, if that fails, then dial out, let's say, zap channel 4. Let's say I have an analog line, and it happens to be channel number 4, and then dial out to my cell phone, 256-428. Yep, 6104. Better put a 1 on the front. And we'll go, go out and try to dial that for 60 seconds. Yep. So, basic, so, so basically what I'm saying is, first try, try to ring my phone for 20 seconds. And if I don't answer within 20 seconds, then automatically roll down to the next step and try to dial out this analog line to, to my cell phone. I think that was my, my 
And then, it, then if I don't answer my voice, it might answer my cell phone within 60 seconds and go to voicemail. Now, obviously, you have to play a, a little bit with that or turn, you know, turn off the voicemail on your cell phone. Otherwise, it'll end up going to your voicemail cell phone, and that'll answer the call instead of going into asterisk voicemail. But there's lots of things you can do there to, to tweak that. There's also a, a module in asterisk called, called, called Find Me, Follow Me that you can get even more advanced in there. Yeah. I mean, you say, Call, call me at this number, then call me at this number, and if I pick on, up on my cell phone, have it read back to me and says, this is the caller ID number of the person who's calling. Do you want to take that call? Do you want to send them to voicemail? Do you want them to, to leave them a message that says, don't ever call me again? Do you want to send them to telemarket or torture? You know, you get to choose what you, what, what you do there. So. What about dialing multiple phones at the same time? What, like what, what, about, what about dialing multiple phones at the same time? So easy, a caveman can do it. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, absolutely nothing. So you can see just 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 how easy it is. Now again, we can get into all kinds of kinds of extra things, uh, but uh, we're out of time here. So thank you for coming to my presentation. Hopefully, I can uh, you know uh, answer any questions after after the presentation is over. As you might have about asterisk. Come up, get some swag, get bumper stickers and stuff. Uh, I haven't thrown any candy, so I've got to do that just for the fun of it. And uh, thanks again. <laughs>